Welcome back to King's Court, and this is Cold Waters. Um, for those that don't know, uh, Cold Waters is a submarine warfare simulation game, uh, focusing mainly on World War II and then around the Cold War eras. Um, when you pick a campaign, you then are prompted to pick which timeline you're going for. So if you go to the 1984, uh, for those that know what it is, like what these are, but if you're looking for like Los Angeles style um, playing, you, that you want the 1984. If you're looking for the older uh, models, like when nuclear submarines um, were more rare uh, and the tactical strengths and weapon strengths of submarines were actually a lot less than you're looking at North Atlantic 1968, which makes the tactics very interesting. But this game, uh, I just have to say it's it's incredible. So for those those that are looking for a good sim submarine simulation, I would say that this is probably hands down one of the best that you can uh, play. Um, and they have there's a lot of stuff in here. You can go through the training, you can go through just a single mission. Like hey, if you don't have a lot of time, you're like I just want to get in there and just try to you know play it and see what's going on. Um, or you maybe are trying a little more aggressive maneuvers. I would highly recommend testing them out in single mission just to see how it works out. Uh, the other cool part is that they do have these unit references, so this is where I'm talking about the Los Angeles um, class submarine, and this is this would be the 1984 era that you would go into, and then you can look at all the different. Like you're just covering your torpedoes, missiles, missile torpedo, just like that, right? And torpedo. Those, these are the older torpedoes here. Dun, dun, dun. Tomahawks, right? So that's newer. Mark 48, that's newer. And then, like, you'll cover planes, helicopters, say your humpback whales, blue whale. Uh, and by the way, the reason why they have this is that you can totally run into these as contacts. Uh, so they'll tell you, hey, we have contact. It's big enough. Um, usually you should, well, I don't know if they have the sounds in it, but you should be able to hear it if, if it is there. Um, but you'll have to match your sonar uh, contact to find out if this if it was a back wheel that you're tracking. So just to jump into this and just kind of show the game, I'm actually going to load my game. And I already went out in... Uh, see my first orders for a mission, which I'll go into the brief, right? So my first orders was, I already did a previous mission where it was to hunt down a, um, Tomahawk-based, um, uh, submarine. Uh, so I tracked them out, which we call them boomers. So I tracked down the boomer, um, destroyed it, and that was a successful mission. So, that, you know, uh, my commanding officer is happy with me, uh, but this one... The uh, orders I received was that they had detected a convoy that was uh, leaving this place. I, I Every time I try saying it, it's horrible, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, and then that they're heading to the Norwegian Sea, and then I'm, going, I'm supposed to go track them down um, and try to uh, kill them. So I'm heading to the Norwegian Sea, so they're actually coming from over here, and they're coming out. And they're probably going to travel along the coastline there. So with this game, if you left-click on this map, you'll go pretty fast, right? And that is actually probably a submarine escort for them. So I'm going to slow down a bit. Here he goes. Tells me I have a new contact. And then you'll see when I right-clicked, I slowed down. And you'll see here, I'm actually going 10 knots, and I'm at 150. It tells you the uh, local conditions, so I'm looking at a strong breeze. It's very weak surface duct and no thermal layer. Um, thermal layers, uh, essentially for anyone who's tr like trying this out, just bear in mind if you're trying to hear someone that's in a thermal air uh, layer or through it, you're not going to have a good time. Um, what that means is if I'm at 600 feet and let's say the thermal layer is at 180 feet and a guy is at 150 feet, Neither him or I will probably hear each other in the water. But if I come up 
through the thermal layer and I ma like match above there, then chances are I might actually hear them, depending, right? It depends on how quiet they are and how quiet I am and so on and so forth. Um, I forget what surface duct is. To be honest, I'm assuming it has to do with uh, the sound created from the surface, which is based on your uh, conditions up top. All right, so here's another thing to note is you can close too. Uh, whoa. Okay, you still let me pick. That's okay, whatever. So in this case, I am going to scroll out. It told me I had a target, which I don't have a target. Okay. Um, some of the things that they changed this time around, so they actually added these tabs that let you like look at your mass you know you can activate active sonar you can drop a decoy you can change your depth saying hey I'm looking for a certain depth um, which I haven't tried some of the stuff for that because this is all um, new they didn't have any of this I, everything I've been do doing before was manual controls anyway if you right click you can spin around right and you can scroll out and you can see I can see it outside um, what I don't know is I don't know if it was the sub that I ran into. So I'm gonna make depth five zero feet die by. And that's new too. They didn't have the uh, um, voiceovers so that you could actually hear what the crew's telling you or what they found. And I, it's a very nice touch. I really do appreciate it being a um, Con sonar, we are cavitating. Oh crap! That was my dumb. Make, make turn. Con sonar, no longer cavitating. Con so. sonar, new contact bearing zero eight six designated Sierra one. Yeah, see that was my fault. So real quick, Sierra. Con maneuvering, making turns four five. So you see here, I'm trying to match up these lines. That's the sonar contact. So, like this one looks pretty good, and this is really close. But you'll see these two are actually off. So it's not the right contact. Uh, but dive at five, zero feet, dive by. there it is. That looks like it is a sub. Whoa. All right, I'm telling them to change course. So because my contact is to the right, I'm looking about, yeah, bearing 8.5, what I want to do is I've only drawn one line to that target. I need to change my course just enough so that I can use a different leg of pathing to say, is the target somewhere else, closer, farther, you know, what's their speed? Yep. Con sonar, Sierra 1 is cavitating. Wow, he's cavitating and he's kicked on active. So right there, because he kicked on active, their, their confidence in the target is now being increased. So now they're saying, okay, he's going fast. He's going really fast. Um, actually, I don't like how fast he's going. Yeah, he's actually closing. I'm launching a torpedo. We're going to make our depth 350. Um, okay, so uh, in here you have it where the, you know you want to make it where the weapon Con sensor goes control. active. Weapon acquired. So in this case, I don't really need to. It's or like one he was doing active, so that this this weapon will see him. Um, the other thing is the weapon search. I'm telling you to go straight. You'll see here it says it has acquired a target, and it's heading towards it. Although I can't actually see him, and it's because I don't really, I personally don't hear him. Con, fire control, weapon countermeasure homing. Yep, so there he goes. He's got countermeasures down. Con sonar. There he is. One. 
classified as submerged submarine. Okay, now the other thing is, I have my torpedo on the wire. They're going to keep trying to do, like, knuckles, um, which knuckles is just doing sharp turns, uh, which actually speaking of, I need to close it. Now, I actually can control the torpedo, so I've told it Con to sonar lost contact. bam, Sierra just like that. One, last bearing, zero, seven, five, contact breaking up. Alright, I love the sounds in this game. I'm telling you, this is this game is just wonderful um, for an old salty dog, which I'm not that old when it comes to it. I only served five years, but... I have I have some very large appreciations to this game. So the other thing is, so I can look at the the uh, conditions. It'll tell me how noisy it is in the water. Um, at the same time, it'll tell me if there is a uh, um, like a, a, a limit to the depth. So like if so like for example, if the bottom was actually at 700 feet, it would show at 700 feet I have something here. Um, one thing to look. So there's still another one. Now this is a trick I'm using to know if there's any other targets around. So what I do know is that he was here. And if you do shift S, it'll tell the ship to rig for ultra quiet. Um, what that means is your crew is going to be as quiet as possible. You'll be at five knots. Um, you can't do anything that makes ambient noises. So like uh, the crew won't move around. They won't um, load torpedoes. They're just going to be as quiet as possible um, in hopes that you can hear. Now if you hit F1, right, it centers back onto your ship. If you hit F3, it'll center on a weapon. Um, if you keep hitting F3, it'll cycle if you have multiple weapons out in the water. So. I'm not hearing anything in particular. So what I'm doing is I'm going to change my rudder. Um, and like I was saying, so you'll see here, we started in this direction. I closed it to create a new leg so that way where I saw these targets and where this comes across um, it helps tighten these bearings so that I can get a better fix on the target. Now the best way to do it honestly would have been for me to go this way and then cut across this way. Um, if I cut across that way if my bearings are showing up and they line up that gives a very strong uh, contact solution. So they'll say, yep, that it's definitely this far away, that kind of stuff. Um, and as you saw, like only once they they classified the sub as the alpha, they did my my crew, um, and they uh, felt confident in their solution. Did it actually show up as the target, and then um, it actually showed up like physically in the water. Only when that that happens will they actually do that. But this game is partially pretty heavy on patience, right? And uh, a lot of these missions, they'll, they'll take time. Um, so let's see. I'm going to make my course 120. So here you can see I'm watching it. So I have 111. Oh, and I can straighten level. Con sonar new contact bearing. Zero. There, straight and level. Uh, not an alpha. What are you? That's close. Nope. It's pretty noisy. There he is. Alvota. Oh, look at that guy. He's way out there. So, like, you saw I scrolled all the way in here, right? And notice, picked him up as soon as I changed the same way I was talking about. So now the noise is here and here, and the noise I'm here and there. They've identified, yeah, that's a, that's a contact. So, what I could do is I could launch a torpedo. 
Um, and then, oh, by the way, so like if you're like, man, what is a Volta in MS, right? I can pull this up. So I know it's a surface contact, which means he was actually escorting. Um, so what I can do, so I believe it's... I love that they do this. So, um, bear in mind, periscope depth, uh, at least before it was 50. At some point in time, I'll test it out and see if it's it's changed. But, so I'm going to have my guy come up to 50, or um, yeah, 50 uh, feet for the depth. And then uh, the plan here is I'm going to use my periscope to try to spot this guy. It said it was only a little windy, so it shouldn't be very choppy seas, so it should be significantly easier to see the target. Um, bear in mind, if it is really choppy seas, periscope might be a little difficult. Uh, when they're choppy, basically you have maybe a split second to look um, before the water actually rises higher than the periscope, so then you won't even be able to see it. Uh, but this, the side note of that, right, is your target would have the same disadvantage. They would only have a split second to see your scope. Um, and of course the scope um, when what they see right is just a gleam right so it's because of the way the periscope works I mean it's got mirrors and glass so it would just create a, a bright light but it would be a very small flickering light usually during sunlight it's not easy to see that right but as you can see we're not in sunlight this is nighttime um, and you can see like okay here's the same thing so it might look a little like this but if the sun or not sun i'm sorry if the moon is out pretty hot like pretty well it would actually show up as a bright light uh, which is not good in this case what are we at we're at yep we're at depth so let's bring out the periscope so you can use o to up your scope and then if you do P, man, they changed all this layout, right? And then I'm right clicking and mo moving. Uh, and you'll see at the top there, it's telling me where it's bearing or where I'm looking, right? And I know he's bearing five nine, so he's supposed to be out here somewhere. And I can zoom in. So that's what I was talking about the swell. So you see the swell there? I couldn't see anything really. Still can't see very well. Let me go ahead and bring up the ESM. See if I can get a radio contact. All right, now bear in mind, it's based on the solution that they have. So in this case, I do want to try to close the target. Yeah, I can't really see anything. All right. OK, so we're going to change this up. So one, I'm gonna have to make my course lower the ESM mast. Here we go. So let's do this. Uh, we are gonna make our depth 450 depth feet. Four, zero, zero, by. by the way, if you're wondering what the sounds are. Sounds crazy, right? It's actually the uh, alpha that I destroyed. So what I do know is that they were showing up out here, and I lost the contact. So now, see, 090, I'm going to make my solution or my direction to be like 030, right? Because they said they were at a bearing 059. Assuming that the target is closing away from me, they probably turn, turned away and started running, which would only make sense, which now I can actually speed up a bit because I'm deeper. So I shouldn't, cavit 
It shouldn't cavitate this way. See, this is where they would ca call out, you know, passing 050 on the left. 20 degrees from desired course, right? But so they don't have it in here because I'm not telling them what course. At least I didn't. All right, now I'm going to tell them to level it out. So we're 3 1. All right, so now basically what I've done is I should be deep enough now that I can speed up and not cavitate. Um, cavitation is really bad. If you cavitate, a lot of any any target in the water can hear you, um, and a lot of passive can pick it up. Now one thing to note though, right, so a surface contact on the other hand, they actually are basically always in a state of permanent cavitation, which makes it really hard for them to hear cavitation in the water. And the targets that don't cavitate are submarines, right? They're actually going to go slower and they're listening throughout the water, stuff like that. That's, that's their design. So in this case, because I know, well, because he's supposed to be, based on what we saw, he's supposed to be a surface contact. I've now sped up. Um, I'm not cavitating still, but as you can see, my sonar panel is showing like this noise. It's like there's no way I can hear anything. Now, I'm going to hit F9 so it speeds up because I'm trying to close distance to the target. Now, essentially what I'm assuming is he's going to be like over here, over here, somewhere in this area right now. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get kind of where he was. Now I'm going to rig, rig, for ultra quiet. rig for quiet so that I can listen. So what should happen is here, our new contact bearing. boom. Three, four, three. Designated Sierra three. Now, if I'm right, it should... Actually, it's not the same. Interesting. That's not the same target. Who are you? Con sonar regained contact on Sierra two bearing zero five zero. Shit, did I just lose him? I did. Well, that looks like it's a sub. Oh. So this guy, right? No, that's a different. Did I just find a wolf pack? A wolf pack is a group of subs actually out here to hunt. So in this case, I'm going to launch a weapon. Now, you'll see here, I'm going to increase my speed. I'm going to turn to put myself at like 330, basically coming closer to this guy. Um, I can't turn too far because if I do, I lose my wire. Right? So. Um, that was the left side, so if I turn so far that the wire is basically brushing against the nose, which actually, looking at it, I'm going to have to stick with zero. I'll stop right there. I don't want to lose that wire. So essentially, now I'm heading straight, straight up. And I'm hoping I'll regain this contact. Right, now I can slow down.
Yep. Here goes the active. Saw that coming. Con maneuvering, making turns for five knots. Now the issue now is if they're going active, they can actually get pings off of me from both sides. So he CR2 is the one that's active. CR3 has not done anything yet. But in theory or principle, right, CR2 could actually use his active to help CR3 see me. <coughs> and I'm pretty, yeah, as I say, it looks like he's sped up. He's going fast. So what I did is I told it, hey, rather than activating here and, and looking, I want you to get a little bit closer and then activate. Man, they're really going for it. Wait a minute, what? So here I'm going to hit four. I'm making it active right now. Con, fire control, weapon countermeasure homing. Con sonar, Sierra 2 is classified as submerged submarine. There he is. All right. Whoops. Wrong key. So I'm going to turn torpedo. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Weapons reacquired. Con sonar, noise maker. Countermeasure drop. Zero, three, five. That's okay. So I'm going to keep it closing. So here you'll see I'm kind of tricking this because it's wire guided. Fire control, weapon acquired. And now I'm cutting in the distance so that way it'll hit them. Sonar lost contact. Sierra two. Last bearing zero three four. Contact breaking up. All right, so Sierra two is done. He's cavitating. That's good enough for me. So, yeah. I'm actually in his baffles. So he has a less chance to hear me. Just because I'm behind a screw. So, um, that's actually something that's good to point out. So, just so you know. Um, contact solutions are best depicted from either the side or the front. If a contact is behind you, then you have to try to hear them through the screw. The slower the screw movement, the easier it is to still hear behind you. But no matter what, it'll never be as good as anywhere in the frontal cones. So you always want to aim. Um, so like for example, basically right now what I'm doing is I'm sneaking up behind him. Is looking pretty good, fellas. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra three. Last bearing three four. Two. Make turns for one zero knots. Maneuvering eye. So I'm gonna speed Con up. Maneuvering. Making turns for one zero knots. So weapon is now searching. All right, and then just to make sure I get a good solution on the target. I'm making it where the weapon will actually ping that target. The other thing is because he's pinging it, it's the same activity as like what the other sub was doing. By doing the active, so the, the torpedo is now doing active, it'll try to help me uh, reacquire the target. Now we know that he did haul ass. Uh, and I'm not quiet, so I can go ahead and reload the torpedo while I'm at it.
Torpedo room, tube one ready. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure it's saying that it's getting a ping out this way. Yeah. So it's got me and it's got him. He's out this way somewhere. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. There he goes. He got him. So you saw just in case, I did some searches. So I was turning it left and right based on this, right? So I was trying to ping him. It's got to find him. And this is saying that he's basically running the same speed as the torpedo. So I don't think it's going to catch him. What's strange is I'm not hearing him. So. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra 3, bearing 3, 4, 0. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm changing my leg just enough that it won't be direct down my nose. There we go. Yeah. That torpedo is getting closer, so here I'm going to do F3. That's the sound. I've been pinged in doo. So here what I'm doing is I see, like, this is part of the game that isn't very realistic. So I can see the targets took a left. Um, theoretically, if my sonarman was that good, uh, he's getting combinations. But as you see here, I'm directing it towards his nose. Sonar. All right, so there are three subs down. It says no vessels. So I don't know if that's all of them, um, but for time, I'm gonna go ahead and call this good. Uh, if you guys like this kind of stuff or if you wanna see more, I'm, I am totally down for it. I apologize for my voice I've been I've been a little sick as of late um, but I really enjoy this game I hope you guys enjoy what you saw uh, they are making updates to this game it looks to be pretty regularly and they're making good updates so like the voiceovers the different overlay stuff that they've added in um, very good cool stuff um, but I am continuing my campaign I do plan to make a couple of videos for it uh, if, if you guys are enjoying this please you know put a like let me know what you think. Um, if you guys want to see something in particular that you're looking for, please let me know and I'll try to make a video towards that. Um, but as always, man, have a good one and I appreciate you guys watching.